So it's been about two months since I started selling the LHZ preamps and I've honestly been very surprised at the response. To date, uh, we've had about 30 sales all over the world, UK, Germany, Slovakia, Australia, Canada, and a lot of them in the United States. I've had a few questions as far as how they're built, um, particularly do I just buy these uh, manufactured off-site somewhere and just package them and resell them? And the answer is no, they all start right here on this bench. So I thought I would take you through the process of what I do to build and test these before they go out. Uh, so let's go take a walk and see what this looks like. So the build starts by setting out all the components that I'm going to use before I start the building. Some folks have asked how do I bend these resistors. I actually have an old pair of channel locks and a pair of pliers that I use to do this. So just put them in there. Uh, the pliers are spring loaded so they don't stress the resistors too much and I bend them by hand. And from there everything is hand assembly. Uh, I've ordered all the components. Uh, that I solder them on there in kind of from the inside out. So I start from the center of the board starting with the op amp chip and then I go on from that to the outside starting with the capacitors first and then with the resistors. I've tried different ways of fixturing these capacitors so I don't have to bend leads but I really didn't have much success so how I've been doing it is I'll set the capacitor in, slightly bend the leads so they don't fall out when I tilt the board, and I'll just tack the one side. Um, then applying a little pressure on the other side, I'll uh, reheat that uh, joint until it settles in and then fully solder it. As you can see, this isn't a, a factory setup. This is me working on a, a little workbench with uh, some you know halfway decent tools and a an inexpensive little PC board holder which uh, makes the job a lot easier. Uh, I tend to put the components on in a few groups and then I'll trim the leads off the back of it. Uh, this does have the side effect of making the back side of the PC board look not that good. Uh, so I, I do address that at the very end so as I, I cut through um, so as we get toward the end there we'll take a look at how that is done. All the components used mirror what was used on the original HasLab. So where they used film capacitors, I used film capacitors on this. Uh, kept with the same polarized and non-polarized non caps. Uh, resistors are all just general um, resistors. Uh, same thing that was used on the original HasLabs. And of course the chip is really what makes this, this particular preamp unique. Uh, the chip was not designed to be an audio preamp it was designed to be an instrumentation preamp used for things like chart recorders uh, so it it has uh, some unique artifacts that it adds when it's when it's pressed real hard as an audio amp and I truly believe that's what makes this this uh, preamp unique so all in all this entire process of putting on the components takes about 15 minutes uh, when I'm all done then I will go back and I will re-wet re-wet the soldering iron and touch up all those joints where I made uh, cuts. That way you have a nice round solder finish. And as we look at the back of it we'll see that there is a lot of flux and residue. So the next step is a, a good bath with a toothbrush <laughs> and some alcohol. Uh, I used two toothbrush heads. The first one for the, the rough clean where I get all the debris off and the second one for a, a finishing clean uh, to get all the, the, the final stuff off. By then, you know, we have a, a nice clean board. Uh, it looks good, solder joints look good. But I do want to test every one of these because every once in a while you'll get a bad chip or a bad cap. And the worst thing that could happen is ship this out to somebody and it doesn't work. So I have a home-built test rig. It's ugly, but it works. So what I've taken are spring-loaded pogo pins and mounted them in a preamp board, and then I'll run some sweep signals. So there's, there's a few signals I run. The first is a sweep test. The first part is with the bass and treble maximized. Uh, then I'll run the entire sweep, and I will compare it to the sweep from the reference. Then I'll reduce the bass and treble to minimum and run the sweep again. And now the, the resulting curve will be inverse. Uh, we'll have a, a prominent mid, but very little bass or treble. And again, that should match the reference. After that, I'll just run some pre-recorded samples. Again, recorded directly from the, the uh, pickup output, uh, just to make sure that everything sounds correct to me as I, as I exercise the bass and treble controls. 
at that point, um, we have a good board. This one is ready to ship. So before I close, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody on the TalkBase forums. Uh, that was the place this project originally started, and if it weren't for all the great feedback uh, that I got from everyone there, this never would have gotten as far as it had. One of the really enjoyable things of this whole project has been talking with bassists all over the world and realizing what a diverse group of people that is. This preamp was really designed just for me. Um, I found that in creating the profile that we did, we accidentally created something that worked for a wide variety of installations. So I've had a lot of really unique challenges from bassists who are, have a very different needs. Uh, when you go and pull down the installation guide and you see the different installation possibilities, each one of those came from an individual user who wrote me and they asked me, how do I do it if I have this kind of bass and these kind of pickups? Together we would solve it and create a new installation diagram. So I invite you to visit the website, lhzpreamps.com. You can pull down the owner's guide to get some inspiration for your own installation. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. If, whether it's a, a challenge or you have some sound samples you want to share, please uh, write me. The uh, support email address is in that installation guide. So thank you again, and we'll talk soon.